Hello, for today's video we are looking at enzymes. We're going to look um, at the way they work and we're going to look in a little bit of detail in terms of their structure. Now before we do anything, let's have a quick overview of what enzymes are all about. The first thing is that they are biological catalysts and by catalysts we mean substances that can speed up chemical reactions. And the other thing about catalysts is not only do they speed up chemical reactions, but they don't actually get involved in the reaction. That means they can be reused. So enzymes are biological catalysts, which means substances that speed up reactions that can be reused. And the biological part means that they're found in living things. Enzymes are very specific in terms of the type of reaction that they will speed up. So one enzyme or one type of enzyme will only work on one type of substance or one type of chemical and the substance it works on we call that a substrate. So one enzyme works on or one type of enzyme works on one type of substrate and that means they are very specific in their action. That also actually means that because there's so many chemical reactions we need so many different enzymes. Um, they work by lowering activation energy. We'll look at that in more detail in a moment. They can work inside of cells or outside of cells and as we know they are all protein. All enzymes are proteins and we'll look again just as a, a bit more of that in a moment. Now this idea of lowering activation energy you may remember from unit or your GC, unit C3 or your GCSE studies if you did it a graph that looks something like this. What we have on our y-axis is energy sometimes labeled as free energy let's spell it right shall we energy and along the bottom here we have time now we can see that as the reaction proceeds as the substrate substrate gets changed into the product we have a little increase in energy here that's the energy that's required to be put into the reaction in order to start it off it's called the activation energy the activation energy and it's from this point here this line here to the tip of that little peak there okay so that's the act uh, the uh, activation energy required to start the uh, reaction off and what enzymes do is they have a way of actually reducing the amount of energy that's required to be put into the reaction to start off with let's just draw it as a solid line so you can see the amount of energy required has been lowered by quite a lot and we have a much lower activation energy. That means the reaction can actually proceed more quickly because we have a lower activation energy. I'm being lazy, don't you be lazy, that's not an accepted abbreviation. But that's what this graph is telling us. So that's the way in which enzymes work. Now let's look a bit more specifically at their structure. If I was to take one enzyme molecule out of one cell of uh, the body it might look a little something like this. Probably won't look anything like that but this is just one I've uh, made up and enzymes as we know or as we just said are protein. They are globular, globular proteins and they have a tertiary structure. The tertiary structure is the third level of structure for proteins and we've talked about that in quite a lot of detail in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that you can go uh, back and uh, have a quick look at that before you come back here. But basically we have um, the alpha helices and beta pleated sheets that are folded and bonded in a particular way and that gives the enzyme a very particular shape. So you can see here this enzyme has that shape. Now I'm not going to draw the enzyme molecules in this video at this level of detail every time so here I've just drawn one overall. Uh, just remember that the level of detail behind it is quite high but for now we can get rid of that and just use this as our enzyme molecule. So here it is and we said that enzymes can either work in cells or out of cells so here's um, some of my enzyme molecules carrying out or helping out reactions to go faster inside the cell. They can either work inside the cell or 
they can be secreted out of the cell and that happens with for example in digestion digestion so digestive system enzymes for example amylase that's made in the pancreas or in the saliva in the mouth in the salivary glands these would be secreted out of the cells so it would work not actually in the cell but outside of the cell okay so that's um, what we mean by our uh, globular structure and where they work now what I want to look at next is two models for the to explain how these enzymes work one is called the lock and key model the other one is called the induced fit model now in terms of the lock and key here's our enzyme molecule and a very important part of that molecule is this area here that's called the active site that's where all the action happens and when we have our substrate molecule that comes along it fits into the active site it has a shape that is complementary to the active site it fits in there and then we can have our product so in this case our product is uh, this substrate that's been broken down into two separate parts okay now the reason why we call this the lock and key is because we can say that the active site is like the lock and the substrate I'm sure you've guessed it is like the key and this actually helps us also explain why enzymes are so specific why only uh, why one enzyme will only work on one type of substrate the it's like saying we've got a lock and only one key will fit the lock so that model is used to explain the idea there now there is another model that we call the induced fit model and that's not like a lock, lock and key that's more like a hand in a glove and what do we mean by that um, why didn't they call it the hand in glove model I don't know but the induced fit model means that the enzyme actually has a slightly flexible shape so this active site is slightly flexible it's not the exact fit for the substrate and what can happen is this and we have the enzyme which is slightly flexible and you can see here that the substrate has managed to uh, fit into the active site because the enzyme has changed its shape slightly and this is what we call the induced fit and that just implies there's some level of flexibility in the shape of the enzyme now what's the difference between the lock and key and the induced fit well the main one is that this one suggests that the enzyme shape is very rigid it's unchanging whereas this one seems to uh, suggest there's some level of flexibility so you should be able to explain what these two models are in terms of um, the way enzymes work and you could probably guess that the next stage for this is the substrate actually being broken down so yep I think that's about everything covered for our introduction to enzymes there's one more video to do uh, for that but for now for this video it's all done thank you for watching and I'll see you soon